is concentrated on the role of public authority for boosting innovation. This morning we have talked quite a lot on, uh, in terms of innovation and now we, we try to explore the role of the public authority uh, driving their fund because we have to start from the consideration that uh, there are something like two trillions of million that could be somehow uh, oriented toward innovation, sustainability, creativity. And uh, because on the European scale, the 14% the of, uh, of the GDP is managed through public tender, so are in the hands of public procurer. In particular, in some, some specific field, and uh, probably also the management of cultural services or, um, I don't know, um, creativity or, or what else, uh, the, the public authority have, uh, of course, a big role. And thanks to the public tender, they can orient the market towards innovation, towards sustainability, towards uh, social responsibility, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the European Union had realized this big rule of the, of the public tendering procedures. So uh, it tried to push in here the, uh, the adoption of this new and different kind of, uh, managing, of managing the, the, um, the public procurement. But um, nowadays, just a little part of uh, innovative procedure is applied for managing of uh, such big um, resources. Probably all of you know the concept of social response uh, or social responsible public, public procurement. So it's uh, to try to boost the market toward uh, a more uh, um, sustainable way to manage product and services. Uh, and on this specific point, the, uh, the European Commission um, published several uh, guidelines and several examples and good practices. Another key uh, kind of public procurement is the green public procurement. Uh, we saw at the beginning the, the, the presentation of um, Christoph Meyer, and uh, we saw the attention that the European Union, the new funding uh, period, is oriented toward the sustainability, the, the green innovation, and of course, the using of uh, the green public procurement, it became a very important key lever for the, such sector and uh, such cross-sectoral approach, which is, which is the sustainability. Uh, I will try to give you just one example of uh, one of the projects that was founded in, previous, um, in the previous programming period of inter adrian program. The name of the project is Bioeconomy Research Driving Innovation and uh, as mainly uh, organized in the Adrian area, so the, the project partner uh, are um, located in Italy, Slovenia, Croatia, uh, Serbia and Albania and Greece. Of course, from the first picture of this country, you can you can imagine how much the the bioeconomy is different uh, is a different level of uh, of implementation and the pro and the approach of the project is try to uh, accordingly and attuning with a specific characteristic of the country boost this kind of sector. So the the, the objective of the, of the project was to develop bioeconomy as a driver for regional innovation system. The uh, promote transnational in the integration among triple helix sector. We also this morning we took quite a lot of uh, triple and quadruple helix, and the project we want to put together together industries and academia and government in order to boost this kind of innovation, and then improve by economic research research driving level in cluster maturity and support bio based product market uptake. In particular, in, in Italy, we, we try to use the, the green public procurement to orient the market and support a specific sector. Uh, those are the sector where in the uh, six countries that I mentioned, we, we focalize our attention. We are quite far from, from, uh, from creativity, but instead creativity is a, is a, is a cross uh, approach that are applied in, in, together with research in, in all this sector. 
what we have done in Italy in order to, to, to try to, to support the, the market update of a new innovative product and, pro, um, and process is try to, uh, to act in a, in a parallel way, both on the supply side and on the demand side. We try to introduce some new uh, criteria in the frame in the frame of uh, minimum environmental criteria that are usually applied in the in the public tendering procedures, including the concept of LCA, carbon footprint, uh, uh, environmental product declaration. So um, all the all the uh, industries that uh, are uh, in the frame of bioeconomy, so that are closer to this field, can. Uh, somehow um, improve the innovation and and uh, through a, a way in order to uh, to uh, promote the market uptake of their innovation their product of course this is just an example which has quite far from uh, culture of creativity but of course the 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 innovation that can be made uh, uh, transversal through innovation through green innovation through green innovation and creativity is uh, how we we can somehow improve the the, the quantity and the market and the, and the possibilities of cci in uh, in uh, european economy and the european development frame the third kind of innovation of procurement that could be uh, used and probably the, the most interesting for a uh, culture creating industries was the innovation R, the innovation procurement, uh, which is a completely different way to, to procure, to, uh, to talk with the market. Because uh, up, uh, adopt this approach means stimulate the supply chain to, to invest in developing better and more innovative goods and services and uh, meet the unmet needs. So, um, and uh, the second uh, pillar of this new approach is unlock the uh, and exploit the creativity and innovation potential of, of supply to deliver better outcomes and cost effect uh, in, a, in a cost effective way. This means completely change the, the, the way of thinking of the procurers. So, um, because they don't start a procurement procedure um, thinking to know the solution, they have before ask the needs to the user of the services and after ask to the market which could be the best solution to provide the uh, um, the answer to the identified needs when we talk about uh, innovation procurement where we have some challenge that require solution that are still not in the market um, and we have two different kinds of innovation procurement. The one that are called PPI, so Public Procurement for Innovation. And the, in this kind, we don't need research, research innovation because the, uh, the solution are not in the market, but are already developed and are in the uh, repository of the innovative enterprises, not yet in the market, but just, but already uh, ready to, to to be uh, largely applied in the market. And uh, what? Uh, the public sector as a, as a launching customer. So for the, in the PPI frame, uh, the public sector is the first adopter of the new innovative product. And, and this represent for the, for the public authority, uh, a good way for provide new and innovative answers and, and effective answer to the needs of their, uh, of their, uh, of the users of the services, and on the other hand, uh, provide a very big opportunity for the innovative enterprise to um, propose their innovation to the market and uh, and the breakthrough of their innovation. Uh, in this sector, the public authority, as a fa as a facilitator, establishing buyer group with critical mass. Uh, and uh, triggering innovation in the in the in the wide market because we have with this kind of innovative procedure we are going to answer to a paradox because the uh, the customer has in mind a big question mark if there are some available and affordable solution in the market that may solve the problem of the users of the services and on the other side the supplier the supply as to themselves is uh, someone in the market could be interested in, in their innovation, in their 
very uh, big innovation and that's that's uh, the way um, the, the innovative approach proposed by this kind of uh, innovative procedures and the steps are simply that the, the customer needs an understanding and analysis so first of all we have to ask to the to the users of the service which are their their interests their needs uh, and then we have to communicate to the market uh, we need such kind of things what you can provide to us that, that's that's look quite simple uh, and afterwards we have this process there is identification market engagement and pro innovation we tested such kind of innovation in the frame of uh, an european funded project which is prominent met in which we applied we we made this uh, needs analysis and, and all this project for the energy refurbishment of public buildings uh, we we concentrate in kindergarten schools historical beer buildings and former factory in uh, for different country, Italy, we are concentrating in, in uh, uh, a school with several problems, in particular thermal insulation, seismic resilience, sensory learning, and acoustic insulation. We are those needs come out from the parents of the child, from the from the um, teachers and the people that work in the in the market, and we ask if the market can provide for us some interesting solution. Uh, this is the, sec the, the third and last example. It's a very interesting project that applies PCP, so pre-commercial procurement. In this kind of procurement, there is also the part related to uh, research. And uh, it was the application of uh, the in this innovative procedure to the learning process. And they asked to the market in this case that if there could be some advanced high tech solution that could ease the the secondary the primary and secondary students to um to have a way of uh, learning more interactive and more effectively i finish with this slide because this process could be a double step process we 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 initiate with a pcp where r and d are part of the process and we arrive to the new uh, to to the second part which is ppi when the when the when the innovative enterprises have developed the, uh, and finished their R&D process and now they are ready to, to uh, propose to the market their innovation through the big role of the public organization through tendering procedure. That all for me and thank you for, for hosting these this, uh, experiences. Thank you very much, Diego.